Hello guys and welcome to another Fossil Friday video! Today we're going to be looking at something I think is very special. We're going to be selling this tooth so I want to make a video and talk about it with you guys while we still have it. Uh, this is a tooth from a medium sized theropod dinosaur named Dromaeosaurus albatensis. I've never seen one of these teeth for sale before. I mean I've seen a few listed but they're always misidentified. Um, I've had a look online recently and the only tooth I could find available online was described as coming from the Hell Creek Formation. Now that's a massive red flag um, and something I see all the time. Dromaeosaurus albatensis teeth are not found in the Hell Creek Formation. Anyway, we'll get into how to identify these teeth later on in the video. Um, I know there's a lot of collectors out there who'd love one of these and they're so often misidentified. So we'll go through how to identify them. The video might get a little bit nerdy for some viewers who are just here to see a dinosaur fossil, so if that happens I'm really sorry, but I'll try and leave the technical stuff about identifying these teeth till the end of the video. But I was very lucky to get this tooth. I found it amongst a couple of hundred Judith River Formation uh, theropod teeth that I purchased a couple of years ago. This tooth was actually collected several decades ago. Um, amongst all those theropod dinosaur teeth I only found two Dromaeosaurus teeth. One sold uh, a while ago, and this is the last one we have now. Anyway, let's get on with it. What was Dromaeosaurus? So, Dromaeosaurus is a type of theropod dinosaur which lived in North America in the middle to late Campion stage of the late Cretaceous, somewhere between 69 and 80 million years ago. Despite being a well known dinosaur, it's poorly known from actual fossils, but we know it was a medium sized carnivore around 2 meters in length with a mouthful of sharp teeth and a curved sickle claw on its foot. The exact relationship between Dromaeosaurus and other theropods is a bit unclear, but it's likely a sister taxon of Dakota Raptor, which was a large Dromaeosaurid found in the Hell Creek Formation. It lived alongside Tyrannosaurids such as Gorgosaurus and Dyspletosaurus. It also shared its environment with other carnivores like Trudontids and another Dromaeosaur, Sauronothelestes. And I'll take this opportunity to show you this. This is a nice little Sauronothelestes tooth. It came from the same batch of fossils, um, in fact most of the theropod teeth in that batch were either from Sauronothelestes or small tyrannosaurs. As I said, it was a dromaeosaur, just like Dromaeosaurus. It was just a little bit smaller. It looks similar to its Asian counterpart, Velociraptor. So there you go, there's a Sauronothelestes tooth. So Dromaeosaurus. As well as living alongside these other carnivores like Sauronothelestes, the Tyrannosaurs and Trudontids, it also shared its habitat and preyed upon a variety of Hadrosaurids and Ceratopsids, such as Avaceratops and Brachylophosaurus. Now given it lived alongside several other small and medium sized theropod dinosaurs, you might ask how they could all coexist in the same habitat. Surely they were all targeting the same prey. Well, analysing the teeth of each of these dinosaurs can shed some light on that, and a study in 2018 did just that. It looked at the feeding wear patterns on teeth from Dromaeosaurus and some other carnivores it lived alongside. For a start, the study found that all these carnivorous dinosaurs from Dromaeosaurus to Sauronothelestes to Troodontids and even the Tyrannosaurs, they all favoured the same characteristic puncture and pull feeding method. Now we know this because of the scratches left on the tooth's enamel. This picture gives you a good idea of how theropod teeth entered the flesh. Based on these scratches, we know all these dinosaurs favoured similar feeding techniques. However, a finite element analysis which analysed the pressure exerted on the teeth during feeding shed some light on how these similar sized dinosaurs such as dromaeosaurs and trudontids managed to coexist. The finite element analysis revealed that dromaeosaurids and trudontids uh, likely targeted different prey. So let's get into this. So from the analysis, the authors found that trudontid teeth showed the highest amount of stress at non-optimal cutting angles. So that is to say, if a tooth entered the flesh at an angle which wasn't completely optimal, it was vulnerable to breakage. From this, we can deduce that trudontids were not very well adapted to holding onto and killing struggling prey. They were restricted to eating softer foods, only processing thinner bones, and limiting the size of their potential prey. Now, Dromaeosaurus had more rounded teeth, meaning bite forces acted on the tooth, and more importantly the denticles or serrations, 
similarly regardless of bite angles. Dromaeosaurus teeth were less likely to break, even if they entered the prey at a non-optimal angle, which is very important if they preyed upon animals which were likely to struggle. Similarly, Sauronotholestes, another Dromaeosaurid, its teeth were able to withstand higher bite forces at non-optimal angles, just like Dromaeosaurus, meaning they were able to exert powerful bites without risking broken teeth. So from this study, we now know that Trudontids ate smaller, softer prey, while the Dromaeosaurids, like Dromaeosaurus and Sauronotholestes, uh, they went after larger prey, allowing Trudontids and Dromaeosaurids to coexist in the same habitat. But let's get on to taking a closer look at this tooth and discuss how they're identified. As you can see, um, at first glance, the teeth of Dromaeosaurus and Sauronotholestes aren't too dissimilar. Um, and very small tyrannosaur teeth, they can look pretty similar too. Well, in order to identify the tooth, an important piece of information we need to establish first is where did the tooth come from and in what rock formation was it found. As we said, Dromaeosaurus albatensis teeth are only found in the middle to late Campion stage of the late Cretaceous. They are not found in younger late Cretaceous rock formations such as the Hell Creek or Lance Creek formation. This tusk comes from the Judith River Formation, but they're also found in the Dinosaur Park Formation and the Prince Creek Formation. Now onto the tooth itself. Um, one of the best references for Dromaeosaurus teeth uh, is the book Dinosaur Systematics by Kenneth Carpenter and Philip Curry. Uh, if you want to pick up a copy of this book, I'll leave the name of the book in the description below. The description of Dromaeosaurus teeth begins on page 108. As they point out in the book, uh, one of the easiest ways to spot a Dromaeosaurus tooth is the distinctive twist in the anterior carina. This twist is present on all Dromaeosaurus teeth. The serrations are also quite square, similar to that of Tyrannosaur serrations, and they often point uh, ever so slightly towards the tip. This picture from the study I mentioned earlier demonstrates the shape of the serrations quite nicely. As you can see, Dromaeosaurus serrations look quite similar to that of Gorgosaurus, which was a Tyrannosaur, they're both rectangular in shape, but Sauronotholestes serrations are more pointed, although they can wear down and look similar to Dromaeosaurus uh, serrations too. Trudontid, on the other hand, has quite unique hook-shaped serrations, uh, which look very different. Trudontid serrations are almost much bigger, which brings us neatly on to one of the most important things, serration count. To know whether the tooth you have is uh, from a Dromaeosaurus and not from a Tyrannosaurid, uh, because as we said, Tyrannosaurid teeth can be quite small too, you have to do a count of the serrations on each carina. To do this, find the midline, that's the middle of the carina, and count the number of serrations over a space of 5mm. So the serrations on the anterior edge should be finer than those on the posterior. So over a space of 5mm, you'll count a greater number of serrations on the anterior edge than on the posterior. In the case of our tooth, uh, we have about 22 serrations per 5mm on the anterior edge and 17 per 5mm on the posterior edge. That's a nice clear distinction, and in fact I think the other tooth I had had about the same uh, serration count as this. So that's how to identify a Dromaeosaurus tooth. Um, I wanted to share this with you as Dromaeosaurus is a very popular dinosaur and people who collect dinosaur fossils um, they often want to add one to their collections but the teeth are pretty rare and misidentified all the time not on purpose I'm sure so hopefully whether you're a collector or a student um, that little explanation was helpful so I hope you enjoyed the video we screwed around and had some fun in the last Fossil Friday video uh, so I want to bring the tone down a bit with some technical nerdy fossil collector stuff this week uh, but even if there's just one dinosaur nerd out there getting slightly aroused by this video and identifying Dromaeosaurus teeth, it was all worth it. So if you liked the video, please leave a like. If you hated it, leave a dislike. Uh, it'll be helpful for me to know going forward. So thank you for watching. And oh, I've got to sell you stuff too. Um, if you think you might want to buy your own fossil, our website is www.dinofossils.co.uk. Um, we sell everything from pocket money fossils to rarer and more expensive pieces uh, like this gorgeous tooth. Um, and if you're already a customer, thank you so much. It's because of you that we get to work with dinosaur fossils for a living. So until next time, thanks for watching and bye!